Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Now someone sent me this video. So I so so about a week, not today, but about a week ago. Talk about this whole point of selling your souls. I sold my soul. So you got these island boys. You understand what I'm saying? And one of the brothers, he came out on live stream. Someone shared this with me and asked me to comment on it about selling his soul. And uh, ever since I sold my soul. So let's go ahead and watch what he had to say and then come back and give our thoughts on this. I'm going to elucidate on it, explain it with some clarity. Can you really sell your soul? And what does that actually mean? So let's go ahead and watch this and then we'll get some clarity on it. And uh, ever since I sold my soul, I haven't been happy ever since. You know what I'm saying? Um, Y'all ain't got to believe me. It ain't what it is. I, I, like, I'm not even capping. It's because, listen, I had to do it, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I had to do it because I was trying to make it, like, you feel me? Like, <clears throat> and as of when I was, th like, selling my soul, um, like, there was things that I could sacrifice about and stuff like that, and I sacrificed myself. You really got to pick, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and. And, and you get anything you want. You get to be rich. You get to, you get to be, you get to have fortune. You get to, you get to have everything, everything you ever wanted. You feel me? But you can think I'm cap. I'm not tripping. I did it a week ago. I haven't been happy ever since. I've been having anxiety every single day. What did I wish for? to be famous and, have, and be rich. All right, so the question is, you hear him saying he sold his soul. Can you actually sell your soul? Like you sell a car, like you sell a house? No, you can't sell your soul. That soul is gonna go back to the creator of the heavens and the earth. We all have a soul and the soul is here with us. It's gonna leave us and the body's gonna stay behind. And some souls are gonna come out peacefully to go back. Like we have, I mean, this is so beautiful. In Islam, we have all the details of what happens to the soul. So I really encourage these young island boys and those followers of theirs to really take the matter really serious because this is a serious issue. Now, you can go ahead and make a pact, and this is what he probably did. Now, we see this all the time. We see these musicians. We see the Lady Gagas, you know, the Beyonce's, you know, all of these famous hip-hop stars, rock stars they come out and they say they made some pact with the devil or they sold their soul. So this is what it actually, I mean, it's not yours that you can go ahead and sell it, but you can go ahead and commit what's called shirk. So this is what they did. This is, this is the actual technical term. It's making a pact. So they make a pact instead of seeking help from the creator of the heavens and the earth, from God Almighty Allah, they start to seek help from the satanic forces, from Iblis, from the Shayateen, from these dark forces. And this is real. This is something that the Quran talks about, this unseen world. So when a human being goes and commits shirk, this is the worst thing that you can do because a person will be crippled. They'll think, okay, I sold my soul. Like if you sold your car, your house, and that's it. If you sold it, it's gone. And if the other person has the title, you can't get it back. But in this case, this is something that now, when you understand, you cannot sell your soul and you can go ahead and redeem yourself. You can go ahead and change your ways. You can go ahead and turn back because the person who made the pact with the devil, they have to do some disgusting, despicable things to go ahead and seek help from Iblis, from the Shayateen, from these dark forces, from these devils. And what happens then from there, life, as you see him testifying, life doesn't get better, it always gets worse. I did it a week ago. I haven't been happy ever since. The depression, the anxiety, all of these things start to kick in. And then the shayateen, these devils will ask you to the next level. They'll go ahead and want things from you to go ahead and do more dirty and disgusting things. But on the flip side, when someone seeks help from their creator, from God Almighty Allah, life seems to get better. It always does. Yes, you'll have hard times, trials, tribulations, yes, but you get this serenity, peace, and contentment. And 
you at the end, you get the reward for all your struggles with paradise. But if a person goes down that route of making a pact with the devil, worshiping the devil, shaitan, iblis, going down that route, what happens? Then the hellfire is the final destination. So let me go ahead and share with you some a few passages from the verbatim word of God Almighty, uh, Allah, the Quran. And I, want, I got some good news, really good news at the end. God Almighty Allah is saying in chapter 3, verse 53 of the Quran, Say, O oh my servants who have transgressed against their own souls. So what kind of transgression is this? This is the optimal transgression. The worst transgression you could do against your soul is to go ahead and give it. That you're literally, you're trying to sell it off to these dark forces, to the shayateen, to these devils. So now what happens is God Almighty is telling you those who have transgressed. So even if you've transgressed against your own soul, despair not of the mercy of Allah, the creator. Despair not. Allah forgives all sins. So even if you, you've done something horrific like this, something very evil, don't worry, island boy. Don't worry, all of the fanboys of island boy and people who have gone down the similar route you still have a chance while you're alive to go ahead and make it right so god almighty allah is saying indeed allah forgives all sins truly he is the most forgiving the most merciful so remember that now on the flip side there are also verses in the quran that talk about if the person continues going down this route of worshiping other than the creator of the heavens and the earth then a person will find his final abode in the hellfire. And then the soul, what we're talking about, the soul, for the person who has dedicated his life, who's changed his life, he could have been like, you know, doing all sorts of things, all corrupt things. And then at the end, that person turns their life around, repents, turns to the creator alone, the one God that Jesus worshipped, that Moses worshipped. This is the one creator that Prophet Muhammad called mankind to worship as he's the last and final messenger sent to mankind. Then... That person, when it's time for that soul to leave the body, then it will come out. Imagine there's a description. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is giving us a de description in the hadith that like a vessel pouring water. Imagine the, the water coming out of a, a vessel, nice and smooth. That's how the soul, when the time of death comes out, it's going to come out of the body nice and smooth. Now, a person who sold his soul to the devil, we addressed that earlier, about selling your soul, but the person who committed shirk, who has gone down the rebellious route, who follows the footsteps of shaitan, who submits not to his creator, but to the will of the devils, the shayateen that submits his or herself and lives a life, a rebellious life, doesn't take heed to the signs. This is a sign now, right? But a person wants to be idolized, chases fame. To be famous. You know, it doesn't care, just heedlessness, living the life of debauchery, doesn't care about really finding what the true purpose of life is. Why am I here? Why have I been created? Just worries about living an ostentatious life, and about money, cars, women, you know, and going to the clubs and popping the bottles and drinking and drugs and alcohol, and then dies in that state of making that pact, selling his soul, like he said. Then what happens? That soul, imagine some wool, and then imagine some hooks trying to pull through that wool and it coming out, getting stuck in between and you got remnants of it. That's how the soul is going to be extracted. The bad soul will be extracted from the body. It will be tormented and pulled out. It's a very scary scenario. And that's why we're doing this out of the love because we want to help prevent that. Island boy and the rest of those out there, you have a chance to turn your life back around. Okay. He didn't take no physical title from you. You didn't sell nothing, but you have a way now to cripple yourself and now to stay in that place of darkness and continue to go ahead and benefit from that, what's the benefit? Nothing but anxiety, stress, depression. You can have all the money and go on all the rides, but you'll still be empty and void inside. Or you can be fulfilled and you can have fulfillment in the heart. That void will be filled that money can't buy. And you will have peace and serenity in life and paradise in the next life and you'll avoid the hellfire. And start after me. You start saying, La ilaha illallah. There's nothing worthy of worship except the creator, Allah. And you start asking for guidance from your creator. And you know what? For everybody out there, we also have a free copy of the Quran that you can get at our website, thedeanshow.com. Go to thedeanshow.com. Get a free copy of the Quran.
where you can learn more about the soul and the topic of the devil, the shaitans. You can learn more about how to worship your creator, what the purpose of life is. It's all in this Quran. Everything is there. Get a free copy and help get this message. Like if you haven't subscribed so we can go ahead and get this message to the island boy and hopefully save him. God Almighty can save him that he can go ahead and get on the straight way, the right way. We'll see you next time. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.